welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about utilities that you can run from the command line. This is in our requirements of the CompTIA a Essentials Exam 220-701, Section 3.2, where we need to demonstrate the proper use of user interfaces. And these two types of user interfaces, command prompt utilities, Telnet, Ping, and IP config, and run line utilities, which MS Config, MS Info 32, DX Diag, CMD, and Reg Edit. And if you've never run these before, that made no sense whatsoever to you, did it? It's a little abbreviation there for all these little programs. You're going to learn all about those today and much more as we step through all of these things you can do at the command line and from the run line on your Windows machine. I love these practical videos because we get to get down into the system and type at the command line and do different things. And this is one of these uh, particular modules where we really do a lot at the command line. So first, let's talk about those two things we were just talking about. There was a command line or command prompt utilities that we needed to run things from. Another one was one called run line utilities. And this is what this was referring to. If you go to your start menu and you click run, whatever you type in here at that line is being referred to as a run line. You can type program names right into this, and it will start those programs. If I was to type notepad and hit enter, it would launch notepad. I don't have to find the icon. It doesn't have to be on my desktop. I just type it in, and it works. The command line utilities means that I'm going to launch a command line and then from that command line, run a particular program. So let's do one. The first one we need to know about is one called Telnet. I'm going to click the Start Run. I'm going to type CMD. That is our command line app application. And it launches this window, cmd.exe. Now I can run things from the command line. And I can run all kinds of different applications and programs for this particular module and the 22701 exam. We need to know about Telnet ping, and IP config. The first command line option we were asked to learn about was Telnet. And Telnet is something that allows us to connect to another computer and be able to access information from that computer in this character-based front end. It's not very graphical. There's not a browser involved. This is a very fundamental, very rudimentary way of communicating to another device. But when you're setting up devices on your network, uh, routers and switches and other devices, and it's especially an older device that doesn't support an encrypted form of communication between the two, a telnet may be the only choice you have. Now, on the internet, there are not too many public telnet sources anymore, but there are a number of games that you can play from a telnet prompt. So I thought that would be something I could at least show you how telnet could be used for different types of applications. To be able to run telnet, we type the word telnet. And we are going to uh, connect to a server called avatar.outland.org. And there's a port number that is used, a TCP port number that is used to connect to this device over port 3000. If something doesn't give you a port number to Telnet with, it's using the default port, and you don't have to put any numbers there at the end. And if we hit Enter, it's going to connect out to Welcome to Avatar, a family-friendly medieval fantasy kingdom. There are a number of text-based games and things that you can associate yourself with and get involved with over the internet. And they've been around for a long time, for years and years. It used to be this was all you had communicating over these very slow networks at the time. These days, of course, you've got graphical programs. You've got browser-based front ends. You've got a lot of other options available. But this is just one of the ways that you might interact with this. I am a Professor Messer. And it says, uh, oh, I have, uh, my name is too short or too long. How about Prof Messer? We'll do that. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. And now you can go through and learn about the universe. And my name is acceptable. I can put a password in here of some kind. We'll put something in there. I'll retype it. And you can now go through the process of playing the game and learning about the races. And it's all involved here. Notice there's no graphics involved because it's a Telnet session. Telnet is simply transferring character-based information from one side to the other. If you're configuring a router or you're configuring a switch, very often it is command line prompts on that device that is used from a Telnet or an encrypted SSH type session in those scenarios. We'll learn more about SSH when we get into other parts of other modules. But for the most basic fundamental text-based communication between devices, Telnet works quite nicely. 
Another command line prompt we were asked to know about is a ping. A ping is a program that allows us to see if another device on the internet is alive or not, or if it's accessible or not from where we are. So from where I am, there's actually another program that can tell me more about IP addresses called ipconfig. And if I do that, it tells me the DNS suffix that I'm on. I have a routed configuration here. It gives me an IP address of 192.168.0.10. My default gateway is 192.168.0.1. If I, from my 0.10 computer right here, wanted to see if 0.1 was alive, I can use the ping command to figure that out. 192.168.0.1. We'll hit Enter. And it goes out to then sends a request to that device, which then sends responses back. And you can see I got a reply back from 192.168.0.1. It was 32 bytes of size. This was the turnaround time. The response time was six milliseconds. And the time to live was 64 hops. So this is very close to me. If I was to do something farther away on the internet, there's a domain name server as 4.2.2.2. Now we can see that it's a number of hops away. I control seed out of this, so we wouldn't we'd be able to see both of these on the screen at the same time. I got a reply back from 4.2.2.2. It was again 32 bytes of data that I sent that was echoed back to me. Notice my response time's a little bit longer because now I'm going out over the internet. My time to live now 56. Every time we hop through a router on the internet, we decrease the time to live by one. So I can see the 56 is a lot less than 64 hops. I went through a number of routers to get to that device before it was able to get back to me. And so we're able to tell a lot from a ping. We know if a device is there, kind of know what type of link it's over. We know how fast it is to get to that device, at least at a very high level, a very general level. And we know how many routers it is between us and that other device. So the IP config and the ping functionality really gives us a lot to work with there when we're trying to troubleshoot on a network how far we can get or can we connect to a device.